Every person has a story, but not everyone has a place to tell it. I'm Frank Swoboda. I've interviewed amazing people all over the planet. I want you to meet them. This week, the most interesting person you've never heard of is... So I'm Megan Duvall, and I'm the most interesting person you've never heard of because I came back to my hometown to save old buildings from destruction. <laughs> well, Megan Duvall, thanks for being uh, one of the most interesting people I've ever met. Um, we haven't really known each other that long. No, I was at like a, 10 minutes a, now. At a, well, kind of. <laughs> I was at a presentation like, like a week ago or something. Yeah. We made a presentation to the, to the city council yep. about our housing and help homeless project. And you presented right before us. And I'm like, whoa, this is, I was, I was, couldn't pay attention to what I was doing. Uh, yeah, so you're a captive audience. I was a captive audience and got to hear what you do. So tell us what you do. And what was that particular you know, presentation about? I know you sure. do them regularly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the historic preservation officer for the city of Spokane, as well as unincorporated county. So both um, kind of So you work for the roles. city and you work for the county. I work for the yeah. city and the county. Like my office is at City Hall. A lot of what we do is in the city, but the county does give us funding every year, and it's oh, been cool. super helpful. So we can, we can list things on the Spokane Register that are out in the unincorporated county. So... What I was actually doing for that study session with city council was, um, oh man, you know, sometimes be careful what you wish for because <laughs> uh, we had, uh, oh my gosh. Um, so a few years ago, we created a large historic district in Brown's edition, which had been on the national register since 1976, but there's no real protections for those properties. So a couple years ago, uh, we did a big ordinance rewrite with council member Lori Kinnear, who's a huge mm -hmm. preservation advocate. And um, it allowed us to create these large historic districts with a vote of the property owners. So you, you kind of have to figure out what the boundaries of these districts are. You write a nomination, you take pictures of all the buildings, um, and then eventually you get to the point where you send out a ballot to the property owners and they so, have to vote yes or no. So do why I do it? Why, why, why do I care? Yeah. <laughs> why why would, do you why care? Why would somebody care to do that in, in a neighborhood? Cause so, I know you've got like three districts now or three areas. Well, we actually even have more than that, okay. but, but yes, the three big ones three big are ones. Corbin park, uh, Brown's edition. And then this one is a potentially another large one. Um, Hilliard has a little district. There's a couple other little tiny ones, um, on the South Hill, but yeah, for the most part, those are the big ones. Um, so why do you do it? That is a really great question. And one of the things that I often say to people when they ask me, like, why preservation? What is it about? And I said, well, let's see, you know, hey, Frank, you live in a historic neighborhood. I do. Why did you pick that neighborhood? Do you like the trees? Do you like the fact that there aren't garages front and center, as we call them, right. uh, snout houses, you know, where all it is is a garage with a front door tucked away behind? Um, you know, sidewalks, uh, front porches, wide streets, all those things people describe to me. And what they're really describing is a sense of place. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you talk about large historic districts, that's what we help to protect is that sense of place. That's the reason why someone moved to a neighborhood. We aren't about like saying you can't build new in this neighborhood or you can't make a single change. Everything has to stay like a museum house. That's not what we do. But what we do is we help manage change. So when change comes, um, like for new construction in particular, you know, we would review what that design looks like. Right now, if you just live in your, in your neighborhood or my neighborhood up on the South Hill, um, anything can be built if something was, you know, if there's a vacant lot, um, as long as it just sort of checks off some basic things with the city guidelines, there are no actual um aesthetic. nobody reviews the aesthetics of a property right it's a zoning um, deal it's just zoning yeah, it's, you know do you have to do yeah with... it says is your is your front door does it face the street okay great is there a window okay great right. those are the only things i mean there really aren't a lot of wow. um guidelines so so when you're talking about a district it really has to come from a it has to bubble up from the grassroots mm -hmm. it has to be property owners that are interested and in, in so in this district in particular the cannon streetcar suburb historic district which is where sixth avenue is the north side which i always think is hard to remember that it's on the, it's the south north hill. side of the south hill right, right. almost, the, the, free, north, almost yes. the freeway and then uh yep exactly so so sixth avenue yeah. um is the northern the boundary cobblestone streets down there. cobblestone yep. streets right. and then where the where the streetcar street came car it came. Cut, cut across Bis yep. bishop court right there um and so uh we take in that from walnut over to lincoln place Okay. Or Lincoln, sorry, Lincoln. Lincoln. And then Monroe there's Lincoln Street. Place and then there's Monroe. Um, so it goes over to there up to 13th. So we on, didn't the, on the west we, side yeah. of Monroe, basically. Yep. All the way to basically 
maple on the other side of maple. Yep, not quite that far, but, but that, yes, that generally chunk. that's the chunk. Gotcha. Um, mm-hmm. And so that, how far that's, up does it go? To 13th. We didn't oh, want to go to 13th, 14th okay. because 14th really sort of is that change. Yeah, it is. You know, it changes yeah, when yeah, it gets yeah. past there. Yep. The reason why we were interested in getting a grant and doing this this is because there's a lot of um, different zoning in that area of mm-hmm. the neighborhood. So there there's is. a lot there's more a lot development of development pressure. Um, you know, all the way up to that, that 6th Avenue area where you can build up to 150 feet. Really, and that's a lot. That's, pretty that's high. high that's you know, stories, yeah. yeah. So you know, and multifamily, which is great, all those things. But um, so we, when we started this project pre-COVID, we also didn't have that new zoning change um, that they're doing the pilot for, where you can actually build up to a fourplex in any. There are no more single-family zones. That just changed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which so, I was going to talk about because yeah. as, as we have worked this last year on this housing and help project. Yeah. A lot of this is about housing. 100%. And like, you know, just having single family homes is not sustainable. Exactly. For anybody in America exactly. anymore. Yes, housing is a huge deal and density is a huge right. deal. And, you know, when when uh, Ben Stuckert was council president, we sometimes would, would argue a little bit because density was such a big deal, you know, a few years ago. And they were talking about, oh, you know, we need to make Browns more dense. We need to make the Lower South Hill more dense. And I was like, hey, Ben. Not at the, you know, we don't have to sacrifice historic properties to get more density. One, those neighborhoods have taken on tons They're pretty of dense. density. No kidding. I mean, the big mansions have been broken up into apartments since the that, 1920s and 30s. Well, I was going to say, my, so my aunt lived on, my aunt Stella, mm-hmm. who was like oh a God, legend. Oh, God, who doesn't love an Aunt Stella? This lady. I think I may have talked to her about before <laughs> on this podcast, but it, she was the head buyer for the Crescent. Oh, yeah. So this is a... Yeah, she was very elegant. Was, yeah, woman of the literally of the world. She would go yeah. to Paris and Rome and yep. Milan and buy for you know, she would yeah. travel the world and, yeah. and buy for the Crescent, which yeah. at the time was a really big, oh, yeah, fancy department store oh, yeah. growing up. And so we would go to her, and she had a brownstone, one of those brownstones that you featured on it was like I think on eighth. Okay. Where you kind of walk up the main stairs and there, and it was all brick in the front, just super elegant. Had these little porches out in front, right? And you go in to this apartment, but yeah. it was really, really elegant, very New York. I'm sure lots elegant. of wood. Oh, dark wood. And, yes, and still a dining room and a living the, room. The first one on the left, that mm-hmm. that apartment. I'll never forget going there a million times. And you would go in and chandeliers. Oh yeah. And she had a her portrait of herself over oh. the fireplace. As you and she do. was super elegant and really fun. Yeah. And just like the first, I always tell people the first exposure that my sisters had to that kind of style. Oh you yeah. Know, our whole family like, whoa, who is that? Yeah. Who is this lady? You was know? she single? She was. Uh, yeah. She her her husband had been a. Um, detective for the for uh, Pinkerton oh my. detective yeah. for the railroads. Okay, so he was this mm. big guy, and he died. So she was a widow, oh, and wow. went, you know, I never knew him. He was a, a, when I was born, he had already passed away. Okay, and so she was just she would travel all over still, and oh, was really gosh. really elegant lady. But that I always thought, you know, that that neighborhood right there on Eighth, there was a lot of apartments still are. There, it's really yeah. really mixed use. It, Totally is. And they actually even it was had cobblestone some streets. Were cobblestone really cool. streets. It was where the streetcar went up, you right. know. And um, there's some super interesting properties like on Cedar that are called double houses. They were they look like houses. So not like what you and I would think of as a duplex, more mm-hmm. of a you know, mid century ranch style duplex, but double houses that have now I think been converted into fourplexes because there was an upstairs and a downstairs. Okay. And they were truly like what you would think of as more of, um, I don't know, something on the East Coast rather right. than in Spokane. Correct. That brownstone yeah. was very East Coast. Yes. Very. I, yeah. Like row houses almost. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. and there are a couple um, different structures. It's such an interesting neighborhood it, for architecture. It really is. I mean, yeah. there's everything there, there from, is, yeah. you know, little tiny houses, little cute cottages mid-century. to to great mid century mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so, anyway, so that was, you know, one of the things that we were sort of looking at was, Mm, density is great and we need density but there's I could pick a lot of places that could take them on more density like Third Avenue why mm-hmm. don't we like look at all those park sea of parking lots on Third Avenue and start thinking about that area maybe just north of downtown um, around the arena there are yeah. some places that could take on a lot more density that haven't right um, so anyway so but- it's a way that what when when there is something proposed um, 
We're not going to sacrifice historic buildings in those districts. So that you're preserving the, the yes. flavor and the character of that neighborhood, yes. even though we're going to have to start shifting away to multi, yes. away from multi, single family into, yeah. into options. Yeah. But when we do it, we don't have to sacrifice the feel we, and yeah. look of, of we can that make sure they Norman in. Rockwell neighborhood in Manitou. Exactly. Yeah, because it's, exactly. it, okay, I, that makes sense. So yeah. you've got three of them, at yeah. least on the South Hill. You've got three kind of major ones, right? Where was the other two? I know there's one in Rockwood. Well, okay, so those are National Register Historic oh, Districts. Really? So those okay. we I have looked seventeen. At the map. Your we map have you said. seventeen of those. Wow. Yes. In national. National Register so, Historic So right Districts. up here is, Ro- is so, Rockwood. Yes, we've got the Rockwood Boulevard one up here. Okay. We have um, within that area of Cannon, um, we have the Ninth Avenue Historic District that runs all the way down and, and you know, it's a little bit of a goofy name because it also takes in some of eighth and tenth and I think even jumps up to eleventh. But Anyway, so there's the Ninth Avenue Historic District. There's, um, th- but you know, we don't have a lot of other ones up on the South. Hill. No, like I thought my neighborhood would be in that mm-hmm. spot. Wouldn't you think so? Yeah, kind of near, just just east of Manitou there. Yeah, and, you're just you're just outside of the Rockwood. Right, just outside uh, of Rockwood. District. In fact, yep. when people, th- I mean, we're technically Rockwood. I yep. think that neighborhood. I think you might be. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I'm actually talking to the Rockwood Neighborhood Council. They want to talk about a local historic district. Um, we'll see. You know, like for us. I'm just going to be honest here is um, politically like like that's not the fight we're going to we will do what we need to do to, um, you know, prepare what we need to prepare. But um, that will probably have to be a private um, uh, endeavor of the neighborhood. Um, to do that because it's not as threatened. You know, we're looking at neighborhoods that have a little bit more threat to them. They've lost a lot of historic buildings. Um, Give me an example of where. um, So, well, like the Cannon one. Really, there's always a straw that broke the camel's back in these neighborhoods. So for the Cannon, it was right by Ace and um, Huckleberries. There were three houses that sat across the street from the um, Colonel Armstrong house, which is Armstrong house is that beautiful white neoclassical house with the huge columns. It's just this giant house right off of Monroe and, and Ninth. Okay. Is it on Ninth? It's on Ninth. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah ninth right across a, the street ninth, from the, ninth the, is a badass street. I mean, man. there's, there's some, some big beautiful houses. There's some cool homes yes. there. Yeah. So if you just go one more block, you've got what one of our little teensy tiny Spokane Register Historic Districts is the Comstock Shadle houses. Those are those Tudor revivals okay. that all kind of look the same. They were all Two two families so basically like moved. The Comstock yeah. family and the Shadle family. Yeah, and that's Comstock where and Shadle yep. centers yep. the Shadle area. Exactly. And the Comstock area exactly. Both named after them. Wow. Exactly. So wow. the Comstock's who, who daughter married the Shadle. Oh. And so Comstock's lived there first, and then they um, built their daughter a home, as you do, well, did back yes, then, uh, after she got married. And then the Comstock's decided, well, we want a little bit bigger house. So then they built the one on the other side of the, the block. And then the um, the daughter and her husband also then built another house right next to it. So they're all these Comstock and Shadle related houses. But, but across the street from the Armstrong house, that big neoclassical one that looks like, you know, it should be in a southern um, yeah, plantation. Yeah, gone with the wind. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, there were these three little um, craftsman bungalows, you know, from right around the turn of the century, maybe 1910. Um, and they were owned by the Rosars family. They, their intent in buying those was that they were going to tear them down and use it as a parking lot for their employees because oh, they didn't have f- a lot of parking. Because there was a Rosars where, where, where Huckleberry's, Huckleberry's is now. I think was, it was it a Rosars? Was it a I Rosars? It, I think it might have been, yeah. It, it, it was, oh, I know because it's owned They're owned by, by the same, yeah. URM owns all yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're so, in the family of Rosars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so anyway, those houses kind of got dilapidated as they were trying to decide what to do. And what ended up happening was, um, they realized they actually could not put a parking lot there, no matter oh, what. You it, just couldn't. It wasn't zoned for. Oh, it, it. wasn't zoned for. And so then they were like, "Well, we're going to just tear these three down. We're going to build three new houses." Ugh. And then that didn't go over. So what ended up happening was they did eventually. They, you know, I mean, people broken into them. They were really a, a, an attractive it was t- nuisance. It was, okay. Yeah, it was they time. needed to go Something because had to go. yeah, because they had you know, they weren't going to do refurbished. anything with them. Yeah. yeah okay. And so one of them had caught on fire. And so there were all these things. Well, the architect that had been helping the Rosars family ended up buying it. And now there's nine on ninth, nines on ninth. And it's it's a very contemporary apartment building. Okay. But um, so some of the people in the neighborhood really hated it when mm-hmm. it first got built. Because it does. It took away they three like classic craftsmen. And now you're what we up. would call it is contemporary compatible. So we would say, you know what? It's kind of dark. It's... You know, they didn't really take down a lot of street trees. It's it kind of just 
recedes no. into nothingness. You don't notice it so much. Um, it's not a sore thumb sticking right, out. Exactly. Right, exactly. But those three houses and that long time push-pull um, on what to do with them, could they be torn down, could they not be torn down, um, that really was the start of the conversation way back in like 2016, 2015. Uh, we need a historic district. Mm. At that point, we had already been talking to Browns who had lost a couple houses as well mm. um, for things that they didn't feel were appropriate in their neighborhood. And so they were first in line and said, okay, come talk to us. Tell us about this local district. They had tried it 25, 30 years ago and couldn't quite get it over the finish line back then. And they needed a couple of straws that broke the camel's back and, and they got it. And so, so, so Browns was the first one. And we said to Cannon, wait, you got to wait, wait, wait. And so then, now yeah. if someone wants to build yeah. like that apartment complex mm -hmm. or rebuild something or revise something, there are rules now aesthetically that they can't, they have to follow there are to rules. be able to build. Yes. And yes. that's, that's a great thing. I think. It's, you know, it's just, there's just another set of eyes. As there's a son of an architect. A, yes, absolutely. That. As a son of an architect, yeah. you understand yeah, that part really. of it. And, um, you know, you think about, about Kenneth Brooks's house up on, um, Sumner little teensy tiny box mm -hmm. of a mid-century house. He was an architect, was he, he not? Was he was a, a friend of my dad. amazing yeah. architect. Ken I was going to say, he Absolutely. must have been. Kenny he Brooks. He was, yeah, yeah. Ken Brooks. People yeah. that in the know call him yeah, yeah, Kenny yeah. Brooks. Yeah, he was, he he was an amazing was, architect. Yeah, amazing. He was one of the ones, he teamed up with Bruce Walker for the Avista building. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you know, so I, you know, really a well-known architect. Yeah. But you think about this little box of a house that didn't look like anything else that was on Sumner. Mm -hmm. But now you don't notice it so much. And I'm sure at the time that he built it, people were like, are you kidding? You right. know, Mr. Brooks, there's not even hardly a window, right, you right. know, facing Sumner Avenue. Right, right, right. Um, but, you know, the idea of having a district and having some group look at what's going in or the changes that are being proposed for it, not only are we looking at that stuff, but there's an opportunity for public comment. So, so there is some public participation. You know, we take comments. We're just like the plan commission or even city council. We have hearings that oh, yeah. you know are advertised, and so people can come in this way. They have a little bit more of a voice. That's cool. Yeah. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I mean, that's why I said be careful what you wish for. With Brown's addition, that was around 300 properties. This is an additional 500 properties. For where? The the Cannon Street one. So is where and that goes where there. now? Cannon. That's that's the the Sixth Avenue, the Sixth to Avenue. Okay. 13th Walnut. Gotcha. To, okay. To Lincoln. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. So I know. So it's. It's kind of crazy, you know, that's where is I Is that the one you're yeah. doing now or that's... That's the one we're doing, doing now. now. Okay, where would you get next if you get to wave your magic wand? Peaceful Valley. That would be really cool. I think Peaceful Valley is one that um, will have development pressures. Yeah. And it's so quirky it's and so cool, cool and it, the and aesthetic. It's, it's really become a hot place. It is. When, I was, cool when we place. were kids, that Frank, I didn't rad. go... Oh, yeah, yeah, John. Yeah. Um, John, so, John, say, John. John. Oh, God. Yeah, I Sorry, know. John. Yeah, Why are we not remembering John's last name? It's going to hit my, me right in the... Say no, John. Yeah. We all know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, works yeah, for yeah. the governor now. Yeah, He's like right. in bike and ped and right, all this right, stuff. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just it's, it's, saw him not very I know, long yeah. Oh, God, somebody help oh, us out. Sorry, I, Frank's I turned see off. see his face. Like yes, I know me too. Totally. Sorry, John. Yeah, sorry, John. We know we know who you are. It's we really come to do. Us. Yes, it will. Yeah. This will be the one that he catches probably. Uh, um, but yes, so so Peaceful Valley, you know, there has been some revitalization efforts down there, but but I'm worried about it because it was like I was saying. I mean, literally when we were kids, I never went to Peaceful Valley. That right. wasn't no, a neighborhood it was, you oh, went. Sketch. To. Yeah, you, it was. You, sketch, it was. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It totally was. So um, I never my really first been down wife, there. Tessa, she was born, or no, she lived till I think at two years old anyway. Um, in the house right north of the schoolhouse, a little on the oh. corner, there, a little yellow oh, house yeah. right there. And so we would go down there all the time. In fact, her dad was uh, a big part of getting that basketball court built there. Oh, yeah. That's he kind of made cool. that happen yep. and sort of championed it or something like that. Yep. So, which I think is, we've filmed down there a bunch for stuff. Oh, yeah. It's a really oh, it's cool, so it's, such it's, a cool oh, location. I mean, yeah. How could it that not be? The court is just really cool. And so, the, br the bridge. Oh, the bridge. I mean, just, even though the bridge uh, just, is kind of a weird thing for a neighborhood. It's very but Brooklyn it's Bridge still, kind of it's, neighborhood. Yeah. Just, and the river right there. I know. There's a lot going on in that. There's I a lot going on. I think that would be great. That old building that got restored down the end, that big brick one. 
I don't know if you're, you know. Oh, is you it know an apartment building? Is yeah, it maybe it is the, now, but it was yeah. like just, just this grand brick building right on the main drag when you go down Peaceful Valley, further down sort of sort of east, west. Oh, oh, you know the, the Amon Apartments, the oh, one that has go. like the ladder coffee yeah. and it's got a bakery and the plant store. Oh, no, 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 no I'm no. talking okay. about all the way, hmm. just all the way down Peaceful oh. Valley. Like oh. Peaceful, there's a big old brick house oh, building. I, I was always oh. fascinated by what that yes, was. Yes, I know which one. That That's the Peach, peach House. The Peach House? But... P I T S C H, those Germans. Oh, peach. Peach, peach, yes, peach <laughs> house. Yes, wow. it was. That was done by a, a brick bricklayer. You know, like that was because what a that cool was the house. ethnic enclave down there. Oh, right. Peaceful sure, Valley sure. was. Those were where the servants for Brown's edition lived. You know, they'd walk gotcha. up the hills. Well, yeah. and that's where I mean, all the Dust Bowl people settled too yeah. in that Glover Park. There, I mean, yeah. it, it's a really historic spot. Yeah. Well, oh, for sure. Well, well the, the other the thing, tribe. That, that <laughs> yeah, they were, were there first. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> Everywhere. Right? I know. Yeah. Um, I really appreciated that. One, the other thing that you were presenting was sort of you talked to me about was this mid-century modern mm-hmm. kind of piece that you guys did or this big work of which my dad was a part of. And yes. you sent me a really nice you know, mock-up of that and, mm-hmm. and a, um, a website that you guys have created, right? Yeah. A landing page yeah. of different styles. And one of his buildings was, was selected as yep. his uh, medical building that he did on 6th Avenue, which is just kind of classic mid-century. Absolutely. Um, and uh, it was just, I was like, wow, I read that and went, gee, I learned a lot about like That was know, interesting, about yeah. About what my dad had done. And, yeah. You know, a lot of the buildings, his 800 buildings that he had kind of designed over his career. But, but that whole era of of all those guys too, all those architects, you know, because he was he worked for Gus Pearson, mm-hmm. his first mm-hmm. job, and Gus oh, yeah. Pearson worked for Cutter. Yep. So that kind of you know oh, the, yeah. the next gener he was sort of that next generation with yeah. with you know Walker McGough and yep. all of those all of those guys. You know, you um, um, I was going to say Ken is it Ken Barner? Uh, Ken Bruce Bar- Walker, Ken, Ken Brooks, yep. Kim Barnard's husband oh yes he yes i don't know really uh, good architect yeah, too he and my yeah. dad were, were good friends i'm not and sure kim if he was are, on if, if kim if was a former had, mayor here yes and yep. so her husband yep. i cannot remember his name yeah but really good architect yeah um and then the one that i noticed there were a couple of really good ones was frank tom barra i think was or yeah uh, uh yeah tom, tom um Oh, Torabara. Torabara. Frank Torabara. Yeah. Yep. For Torabara and um, Ron Tan were both yep. friends of my dad. Okay. And they that kind of Asian influence and style yes. that they had was really, you know, that that they all sort of, in my opinion, they kind of all followed that Frank Lloyd Wright sort of mm-hmm. arts and craft world right mm-hmm. into that that kind of elegant, simple stuff that they simple. did. Yeah, but like Ron down. was amazing because he was a, he was a prisoner of war. Was he really? He was. I believe, because huh. I remember meeting him and my and my dad telling me stories about how he had actually been in in one of the um you know the the, the camps yeah the here. camps yeah yeah oh yeah for for Japanese Americans yeah you know what I did read that I did read that because I think he his family might have lived more in the Seattle area maybe and you know we were like right at the right bef- at the er- edge of yes. evacuation zones that's a right a lot of folks came to Spokane right so I I think he was oh, a part of that and then came here maybe he came here after that yeah. But they were friends our entire lives and kind of colleagues and worked on all kinds of stuff together. And so, okay. But I just pre- I would love that whole th- oh idea my gosh. that the stuff, the work that has been done and some of the buildings, the parkades are phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Know. So I was going to ask you, what is your favorite of that of that era? What was your favorite of those? Because I know it's impossible to probably say that, but, oh, I you know, know, between the commercial buildings and the, because my dad had done the Monac Native American Indian oh, Center yeah. at Gonzaga, which was a really bold kind of building that's now the Schoenberg Center. Yeah, right? yeah. And he was always pissed because they didn't put the top on. <laughs> oh, Father he Father Schoenberg ran out of something. money and he's like, what? <laughs> you didn't finish it? Yeah. So he was always kind of mad about that. But but that was an amazing building as from the inside of it. I got remember seeing it as a kid. It was a museum. It was a very Guggenheim. It was just like the Guggenheim. Oh, how So you would walk inside and the whole thing inside was one kind of constant walk as you do in the Guggenheim. It's sort of like the old Coliseum. Remember when you would walk up yeah, the... Yeah, yes, <laughs> like you do that right. Big. Yes, exactly right. You realize, oh, I'm on the third floor yes, all of a sudden. And you're yes. seeing all the art along the way. And it was a really elegant building. And now they've turned it into office building. Or, you know, oh, that's... I was going to say, I don't room. think I've ever been in yeah. there. Yeah, well, now it's just office... It's just okay. office. You wouldn't recognize it. You wouldn't it recognize anymore. it. It okay. wasn't... And, and, and they lost the collection. They, they, had, they lost the Native collection, I believe. Did they repatriate I don't remember it where it went. I can't remember the story of that, but I think huh. the Jesuits gave it or 
okay. donated somewhere else, so they had no more use for it, and yeah. so they had to convert it, which made sense for Gonzaga, but but that was, you know, like a sh- very bold building at the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, to yeah. To kind of build that. I mean, it was... Uh, well, I think what we talked about when we just first met in that first few minutes was... Um, I would have to say, I mean, I loved St. Charles. I'm not oh, pandering to you. Is amazing. But that church and the building is just phenomenal. That's the church that I grew up in, and he did not design that. Yeah. So, yeah. but everybody thinks he did. Your dad? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, because oh, we were we were um, parishioners there forever. So we okay. grew up in that church. That was the church okay. I grew up in. And yeah. I did actually a, 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 in eighth grade. I did a of a, a whole study on the church and the did you really oh yes. yeah and, and uh, Monsignor O'Connor was this legendary M- Monsignor you know we had to like present to him and he you know commented on it and stuff and oh, I think gosh. I interviewed him for it or something because uh-huh. he was the first one that he was really the pastor that, that championed that because he was really into it but what a phenomenal building and just growing up in that I was like this is how every church yeah. everybody went to church no. in a place like that no I know it's a hyperbolic parabola yep. which is a really interesting yep. design I think uh, I think Walker McGoff did that. Maybe I can't remember. You funk, know, funk. I think it was Funk. It was Funk. Molander or something. Molander Funk. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And then Harold yep. Blaze did all of the yes. art, and so he and my dad were friends too. And they did a lot of, you know, when you're doing public uh, uh, buildings, you have yeah, there's have a that requirement component. of one percent or something of it yep. has to go to an artist has to put in, which I think is a phenomenal thing. And so dad would hire Harold a lot sure. to do really cool stuff on a lot of that mid-century work. Oh yeah. But I mean, the stained glass was done. I was reading in your thing. It was done by this artist in Chartres, France, and I mean, it is, it is a phenomenal. It's fantastic building, and yeah. and the just the ironwork and the stained glass yep. and the I mean, there's just nothing like that in I the hope world. They, I really hope that um, that you know it 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 stays. You know, like that's mm. those preservation. It should be on the National sometimes. Historic Register. I would um, think that thing is yeah. unbelievable. Religious properties, you know, Don't? it's not very often. Um, although it was very interesting, we were looking at down on Riverside Avenue mm. of creating potentially a local historic do- district down there, and I um, talked with um, a couple of the I'm not sure the the lay people that were you know higher up decision maker people as well as um, the priest there. Um, who is, uh, of course, some sort of, he's like my dad's second cousin. You know, one of those, <laughs> you know, everybody's, yeah, Conley. Um, oh, yeah, the Conley, yeah, 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 Father yeah. Conley. Are you related to the Conley family? Yeah, and the well, through, my, through the, through, so my dad was a Kelly, okay. and, and then he had five younger sisters, and then um, his uncle, I have five Ben, sisters. oh, really, yeah. his uncle Ben was, um, he, he had like, oh, God, 12 kids or something, and so I think one of his daughters married a Conley. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and the Connellys and the yes. Buckleys and the Condons are all yes. connected. Yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, so that's, yeah, that's the, the connection. I can there. see it actually in you. you oh, are, can you? Look you? Like, yeah, you look like the Buckley family. Oh, that's, see, that's you, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you hmm. have the resemblance. It's I have funny. one of those crazy ancestry DNA stories, so I may not be as related as you can. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I better not no. say it on anything public. I have a few aunts <laughs> that don't know yet. Uh, but that said... I'm more Spanish than Irish. Oh, I used to be right? Irish. I thought I was Irish. I was Megan Kelly. Wow. But it turns out I'm an Alonzo. Is that right? Yeah. I always thought I was uh, just completely Italian. Uh, part of me was Italian. We found out it was Irish. So I'm more Irish. Isn't than... that funny? I was like, I did the wow. ancestry test. And I was like, how am I less than 1% Irish? Like, I literally can sh- trace my people back to Ireland. But no, I wasn't. Wow. But anyway, so so the Catholic, when we're talking about the Catholic Church and, and if they list buildings, we do right. have um, St. Joseph's. Was listed. Okay, that's the where, where the where the cemetery is. Is that the one? No, where it's right Joseph? off of like Broadway. It's right down in in like Kendall Yards ish area, oh, West yeah, Central. Oh yeah, yeah, I know where that is. Yeah, I think that's St. Joseph's. I'm pretty sure. I think anyway, so. and then the um, yeah, there's a photography studio. Yeah, that John Hamilton. Right Hamilton's. Hamilton's. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They because I think that is the original. Yeah, St. Like, Joseph's. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So St. Joseph's, have, right? Yeah, they had Spanish mass there yes. too. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so so St. Joseph's. It's a cool little church. Yeah, neat church. Really Right on Walk. Right on Maple. Yeah. So that yeah, one yeah, is yeah. so that one's listed, that and church. there's just like I don't even know if they yeah, have St. Charles really ones. should be I know. because that is I mean I know. really really rare. I know. Like so, there's nothing like that in the world. Well, maybe probably. you should can pull some strings yeah. and we can write a somebody watch this for and help it. me out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so so that one I think that's got to be one of my favorites. I mean, I love um, 
how wild and wacky churches would go with the mid-century movement. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. My dad did a bunch of churches. I mean, did he do Pasco, a bunch of churches too? Yeah. St. Pat's and Pasco was a really, really, it's very yeah. similar. It's got a similar vein. Really? Lots five. I finally got to go see that a couple years ago. It's like, well, I've never been there, but I've yeah. heard about it. And like, wow, it, is, it holds up. It's really cool still. Some of them really yeah, do hold they up. they do. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It's, yeah, there, there's a definite feel to those. Yeah. What about homes or any of those? That oh you're... my gosh, there's, you know, and I, and now, because I didn't really think we were going to go into the mid-century stuff. I didn't really look, ex- <laughs> but there's a Moritz Kundig house that is um, sort of in, by Upper Lincoln Park. And um, it's in that um, in that survey that we did. Mm. And it is just Amazing. an unbelievable, cool house um, that just really very sort of prairie and Frank Lloyd Wright, but, but yeah. um, you know, umped a little bit. Um, yeah. and, and inside very um, kind of small not as big as you think it was, but the outside spaces and just, it was just a a, a 360 design. I think it was just really cool. So, um, but you know, the interesting thing about the mid-century architects that were in Spokane, you know, the Royal McClure's and Bruce Walker and, Mm -hmm. um, and Trogdon, you know, all of these guys, it's crazy, but they were like, they were all Harvard guys that studied under Walter Gropius, who is, you know, like, Bauhaus. I mean, you hear these German terms right. like Bauhaus and Mies van der Rohe and all these things. When they all left Germany, as things were becoming more uncomfortable yeah, in the 30s, right. um, like Walter Gropius ended up at Harvard, you know, and um, and these guys studied under him, and then they come back to little old Spokane. Yeah. And so our mid-century stock here is like this crazy it's high amazing. end stuff. Yeah. And it's yeah. It's so when it was cool. a really competitive thing, I just remember. Yeah. My, I mean, I was the, you know younger. Yeah. But my dad in his heyday in that fifties, sixties. I mean, he you know was uh, you could tell that those guys were all friends and they but they were competitive like oh, yeah. he's like I gotta top that one sure you know? they were also probably competing for the same jobs oh you know? absolutely yeah all the time constantly yeah, 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 yeah. My dad said there was one. I won't. I don't remember who it was, thankfully. But but uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was like that guy always gets a lot of work, you know. Uh-huh. Like, and and uh, dad's like, yeah, he, he hung out at the at the country club. Oh the right, time. right. He goes, I go, wow, is he a good architect? He goes, he was a really good business guy. Yeah, <laughs> dad was a Some dad was an architect. Were. He was an artist and a. But a lot of those guys were, you know, they got yeah. the job. Yeah, and, and you know, my dad always said the the three most important things uh, for an architect are. Uh, get the job, get the job, and get the job. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, you know, yep. they just got it, and then they made made the best of it. But he, yeah, he did six buildings in Gonzaga's campus, the Cog, yeah, which just got re, you know, torn down and redone um, into the Hemmingson Center. But that was have you forever. seen many of your dad's buildings get torn down now? I mean, do you that get, was hard yeah, seeing the Cog get down. Say, that was, I but, it, think but it was so. a real honor that what replaced it was so spectacular, yeah. and we had a bunch of stuff. But when we went through Dad's stuff, we we uh, donated a lot of it to Gonzaga and to oh to the Mac to the Mac oh okay as well. I was so gonna they, say there's Anna and to the some of the church yeah that's that's mm-hmm. how we kind of connected yeah. too but we gave a ton of it to to the Mac archives, um, the Ferris collection there yep. and then to if we had a church that he we knew that he did stuff for like St Thomas More yeah. or a lot of these churches oh, we gave them to I think he did the gym there or something. Oh, okay um, and maybe the school but he but we. We gave it to the school. Oh, okay, the church, so they would have you've their got your original yeah, plans. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then the rest, a ton of it was to Gonzaga's archives. So they have a bunch of okay. it because he did six buildings there. Yeah. The, the health center is a really cool mid-century building. Yeah. Kind of hidden now. They still use it. It's still going. Oh, really? It's a really cool little spot. Yeah, right. Right yep. up, kind of Aster, I think, right towards on Sharp there. Um, but subtle, blends in. Right. But re- Unless you're looking for yeah, it. Yeah, but yep. it's really cool. A little building, um, and the uh, but but the cog was you know this. Yeah. He actually remodeled it, so he didn't do the original cog. Okay, it was a remodel and it had a floating dance floor. So when oh. you when you'd be on the dance floor, it would move. And really? It, yeah, and it was designed to do that. Yeah, which the was woman's club is pretty like that. interesting. Yeah, yeah the dance okay. floor I think is pretty yeah, special. Yeah, so the it's got some had, spring Yeah, he to had it. that yeah. that that was part of the oh, okay. dance floor done. Huh? And I remember being there like, whoa, this thing is moving, you know. Um, and but it was yeah it was a really elegant building it was, but yep. it just outgrew itself I mean come on the yeah. campus there's no way we, yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. was time for sure so I don't yeah. think anybody was you you know mad that it went away uh, but, well when but, we yeah. when we did that survey in 2017 um, it was because you know if you go back 50 years that's generally the age things have to be to be considered historic for preservation purposes Makes sense, yeah. and so 
we were really going back to that and we were thinking, oh gosh, that's 1967 now. So, right. you know, that, you know, in, in 2017. And so we worked with Helvetica, which is, mm-hmm. you yeah. guys know, I'm sure you know those Absolutely. guys, Aaron and, oh, yeah. and um, CK. CK for sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they were, they had they helped got the Mac. super into it. They, See, they helped the Mac on yeah, their Yeah, they helped the yes, Mac with their exhibit. And yeah. so they had like, I mean, normally, you know, we put out an RFP for a survey and inventory project of mid-century resources in Spokane. We get a bunch of historic preservation consultants that apply for it. Right. And instead, we get this super interesting... Design firm. Design who's firm. Who's super into that it, That is yeah. super into this one thing. Like, right. they would never have applied for anything else. Right. But they're like, you know, have become the, 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 the local go-to. experts. Yeah, they are. And, they did an um, amazing job. So they had this vast collection already. And... And they, you know, they they combined with a, a preservation consultant to do c- some of the stuff that they weren't experts in, but uh, we were just like intrigued, like, hey, this is kind of outside the box thinking, and let's do this. And then they're the ones that were like, hey, let's do, let's like keep, get people interested. And so we did a mid-century week for a whole year, oh, cool. where every Thursday afternoon at like three, we would put out the next building whatever it was going to be so we would on our facebook page we would have a picture oh, of it cool. and then um then then they would also um put it on the map on our website so nothing so everything was getting built throughout the year and people were like super invested and we did like we did dicks and oh, we yeah, did cool building, um, the actually. shadal water tower right and you know some <clears throat> other industrial yeah like things. my dad's favorite the, his i mean the favorite buildings that he did were like the flamingo restaurant isn't that which was, where was that it was amazing i've heard some great stories about that in fact i've shared it, i think on the podcast one of them but it was up by where Kmart used to be on the North oh, Division. North Division. Where Lowe's is. Okay, yeah. That was the edge of town. Yeah, oh like yeah. The edge oh, of town. my my grandparents were St. Thomas there, More okay, yeah. so and, they lived up there. And it there felt was like an forever. Airstrip up there. Okay, yes, I've my seen dad that. Had yes, a plane. yeah. He would fly to Missoula yeah. and Libby and stuff. In fact, he passed away because he got mesothelioma because he did design fifteen buildings in Libby oh, and got God. and got that that whole you know yeah horrible yeah stuff that got done up in Libby. Yeah, he got that. Okay. Um, so that's that's eventually what killed him. Okay. But but he that area he had his office up there, his first office huh. up there, right kind of at the edge of town. Okay. Um, where the airstrip was, and they this elegant night sixties nightclub oh. sort of rat pack, unbelievable. Oh. It was I wish we had some of those. Really I've heard cool. A couple and it got places torn that... down, but my oh. I heard a, you know there was a story that he helped. So, uh, a guy who eventually became mayor, <laughs> shuttle him out when he was young and is starting his career and he was trying to get, and he, I guess the guy had had too much to drink and, and uh, this, I ran into another guy who told me, he goes, you know, your dad helped one night, the opening of the black tie event for this <laughs> oh, thing. Oh, yeah. And he's like getting this guy out the back door. And back home. And back home yeah. because he was going to embarrass himself because oh, he was young. No. And I and I, I, my dad was alive at the time, so I told him that story. I'm like, Dad, did you remember this yeah. at the at the gala or the opening of the flamingo? Uh-huh. Painted the whole thing, and he's like, no, I don't think that. No, yeah, like, that I, don't, I don't remember familiar. that. And I'm like, you're <laughs> such a liar right, right now, because I know you know, and you would never even. Right. Tell, he would never go tell anybody that, you know. Oh, that's but, funny. But it was really like one of the things he was most proud of because it was super kitschy, vague, oh, like, you I know, would, I would super love kitschy. If we had I know. If you could, I would love to see that what that looked like. I've the heard sign was really the cool. Dragon in Hilliard, which I haven't ever been into, but I've heard that one is pretty dark. Yeah, and, this know, was like more feels... elegant '60s. Oh, okay, like more. Okay, Vegas. yeah. Okay, and it was pink, big flamingo oh my gosh. sign, and I think he did the Stardust. Oh, the Stardust. Sounds motel like Vegas. Are you something? sure you're not in Vegas? No, I know he had this kind of like <laughs> like Jet, George Jetson right. sort of thing going on. Oh for my a while gosh! There too. Yeah, there was some really cool. I my brother probably knows. Which one I'm talking about? But I think the Stardust Motel or something. Okay. It's really, really cool. And the yeah. signs were really elevated. Oh, the signs. The signs oh. were what was the coolest part I of those know. things, you know. That so. was what I liked about Division as a kid. We always lived on the South Hill, but going to grandparents' house yep. on um, Wipert Drive yep. out there on the north side. And um, so you drive down um, Division. And I remember um, at one point hearing, like, there's more Chinese restaurants. Correct. In Asian, Spokane, Asian per capita. That's right. Then any, per- then any you know, I was like, is that true or not? I, I don't know. But all There's of us Anna kids Harbine in the 70s right were like, I know, we're like, huh. 
Is that true? Yeah. Another, I've told more a few research. visitors I that. Know. I know. I've told Somebody needs that, to do yeah. it. It probably was true. I mean, yeah, but lots of, I mean, still. all that neon on division. Oh, yeah. and yeah. um, It's just sort of gaudy, yeah. actually. It was pretty, some of it. Yeah. <laughs> favorite yeah, build, favorite ha- house then, not mid-century, but your yeah. favorite place. So, What's the coolest house in this town? I mean, I... So I have to tell the personal story of, um, see, Anna probably has already talked about about it, but when I was a kid, so total, totally grew up lower middle class, you know, going on the way up the hill on the, the east side of the South Hill between Thor and Freya. Yeah. Um, and uh, my parents bought that house in 1975, mm-hmm. you know, total like 50s raised ranch. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know. I never had been in a fancy house in my life. I just never had. That wasn't, we didn't know those kind of people. We were always just a a middle-class family. So as a campfire girl, we would do tours and stuff. You know, you do your field trips. Right. And so I remember going to the Campbell house. Oh, yeah. um, Yeah, sure. um, At the Mac Museum. At the Mac. And it was the Cheney Coles Museum back then. Right, You know, there was still the old, you know, the old museum. And then the house still had lots of exhibits in it. But it was starting to kind of turn a little bit back into the house, but not quite. Um, So anyway, walking into that place and thinking... Are you telling me that a mom, a dad, and a girl, and a kid lived in this house with it. their servants and that, like all this space, yeah. this, this huge yeah. house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like captivated by the staircase and the window seat. That's that, a you place know, that you. Had you to, that's a that's something you see in a in a in a book or something, a movie or something. It was but not, not in something your own that hometown. was part of my regular right. life. Not in your own hometown. And so. Yeah. I always loved that house and I would go back, you know, I think I probably went a couple times as a campfire kid, you know, but then, um, even in high school, every once in a while, I would like go down and spend an afternoon at the Campbell house. And, um, and so when I went to college, I was like, what am I going to be? You know, what do I want to do? I was always an art person, but I thought, you know, maybe an architect, you know, but I didn't this is when you're 18, you don't understand that architects also can work on existing buildings. I didn't know that. I was like, I really love architecture, but I don't want to build new buildings. Right. So I, don't, I guess I don't like, want to like be an architect. You had to do yeah, yeah, like yeah. I just didn't get it, you right. know. And so, um, so I, but I always remembered the Campbell House. You know, like that was my first entree into something that I thought, how do you live in a place like this? Or how do you work in a place with this? You know, right. but I didn't have a name for it or anything. So fast forward, I end up being a fine arts major in college. Mm-hmm. I did, I did like register as an architecture major and then I looked at all the physics and math classes. Math, yeah. I was going to say. That doesn't sound interesting. Rare combination of artist and math. Exactly. I was like, "Mm -hmm." yeah, I know. So (laughs) anyway, just became a fine arts major and then um, worked at the Art Institute of Seattle for a couple years after school. So I went to WSU for Mm -hmm. undergrad, go to Seattle, living with a girlfriend, just having a good time. And I was working at the Art Institute of Seattle and we were um, redoing our school's catalog. Um, and we were, so my job, cause I was just a nobody, um, was to call all the other art schools in the country and get them to send us a catalog. Cause we were like, why are we even at the wheel? We see some cool ideas. So I'm getting all these and I'm just sort of looking through them as they're coming in and the mail to me. And I get one from the Savannah college of art design and I'm flipping through it. And I was reading the book, midnight in the garden of good and evil. Oh my gosh. Savannah. Georgia. And Savannah. And I movie. open this thing and I'm like. Well, what is this? But there's this chances? program called historic preservation, and I was like, That's what like I my do. mind is blown, and I was like, yeah, I never knew what this was, and then I'm like, didn't know ooh, the Campbell House, and I, you know, I'm thinking back to Brown's Edition, and how much I always was like, Mom, Dad, can you drive me through Brown's Edition? I loved the Gilded oh, Age mansions. So cool. I mean, it's so beautiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so anyway, so within like five months, I was living in Savannah, no going way. to grad school, That's an amazing which was amazing. Great place to study preservation, oh, yeah. obviously. obviously. So, um, you know, spent a couple years in the 90s there and uh, studied preservation. And But the funny thing was, so then I come, so then I get a big girl job and I come back and I worked in a little town called Enumclaw. Yeah. I was Not like Enumclaw. a downtown revitalization person. I was their first director. And, That's oh cool. my God, talk about... Not knowing what the heck, you know, you get there and I'm like, oh, I have a board of directors, but I don't have a computer. I have no office. I have nothing like having to build it from the ground up. Wow. And so I stayed there for a couple of years, but got an opportunity to get a job at the, um, at the state preservation office. So oh, cool. I worked with local governments and everything. But one of the things that I got when I was there as this, this um, program person 
was they were like, oh, there's this little organization called the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation. I promise this is coming back to the Campbell House. <laughs> Your favorite. And yes, house. and and um, they're like, we need somebody just to go to their meetings. You know, they have like $800 in the bank, and um, they're just this group of volunteers. So I would go, and they'd meet all around the state, so it was cool because I could go other places. And um, they, like a year later, they got this donation of this house on First Avenue, or First Hill in um, Seattle, Seattle, like yeah, right, First Capitol Hill, Hill First yeah. Hill. Yeah. And um, this really, really, you know, extremely wealthy woman, it was her family's home, and it was called the Stimson Green Mansion, <laughs> and she was part of the Stimson family, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so she gave it over. Um, so all of a sudden now, they are not just like this little organization. Now they have this house with an endowment and everything. And I walk into this house, the first time I ever got to see it. I walk in and I was like, I know where everything is in this house. And I'm like... It's the Campbell house. It was the Campbell house. Same but it design. was... Kirtland Cutter didn't think anybody would travel 300 miles to go see this other house. He literally <laughs> mirror imaged the it. plans. And I was like, <laughs> it was the weird. I was like, oh my God, am I a ghost? You know, like, how am I, like, how do I know where everything is in Cutter this house? And then it. it was like, oh, well, it's Kirtland Cutter. And you uh, might be familiar with the Campbell House in Spokane, where you're from. And so it was just like this weird full circle wow. thing, you know? Like, so I always have to kind of go back to the Campbell House was the first house I felt like what is this? You know, like, I need more of this, like, yeah, gilded it's, uh, age so kind uh, of elegant. thing. I yeah. love all of that. I do, too. I love, so that's your favorite. That's yeah. the cool. It, so that just is, because it's so personal to me. But yeah. I, there's so many great oh, houses there. There are a lot of great houses. Oh, there. my God, there's so many great ones. I mean, it's a really ones. rare thing. You think about the parks and how elegant they are. Yeah. And incredible, the Olmstead and everything. I mean, Spokane is not a bad place, no, you know? No, not in terms of, especially in terms of. And I left for a long of, time. Yeah, yeah. It's British, yeah. I mean, then the wealth hit just the right time for those things to happen. It absolutely did. Kind of right in my you know my sweet spot of, yeah. of love yeah. I'll tell you one other quick one about another house that I really think is interesting and you might know this house it's on it's on 13th and Bernard okay it's called the Eikenberry Pierce house it's been it's had scaffolding in front of it for a million years it's it's just right by Roosevelt school so okay. it's just if you're going up you know Grove if you look over you'll see it okay um, but it was like in the building official process, which means like it didn't have water, it didn't have electricity for years. I think that the gentleman who owned it, the Pierce who owned it, the father, he was like an editor of the um, the review, the spokesman review. 13th um, and, and 13th Bernard. and Bernard. Okay. So, you know, Bernard is a little bit quieter street. See, I'm going to keep hitting this. It's a little bit quieter <laughs> street right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just one off of kind of where Stevens comes down. Yeah, the road. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that little pocket right there. That's that yeah. little pocket. Where the so, where the where the the, the great uh, Halloween house is. There's a great Halloween maybe, house. Maybe yes. <laughs> okay. Probably yes. About, right. Just just yeah. a little it's south a little of Roosevelt. Curved street. Yes. That little curved yep. street is yep. right. Yeah. Yep. Great spot. North of Roosevelt. North of Roosevelt. Yes. Because yes. yes. that's what we do no, on the I south. Know, everything is. is to the south. Well, I'm a north side guy. So <laughs> I know. I'm a so yes. Guy, yes. So I can't take it. Yeah. We let you come over on that the side of the okay. All right. Whatever. I guess. Um. But that house, so so it had been kind of hoarded, um, never had garbage service. He just burned all of the garbage in the in the fireplace. Whoa. So it was just filled with stuff. But this house, so it went to his son, who owns it now, and is the one that's kind of slowly working on it. But he's the one that fought the city for years and years. I think I years. know exactly what you're talking about. I bet yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've You'll seen, drive I've by seen it, it. No, and you're it's cool. Like, they just painted it. Like, it's yeah, painted okay, all kinds yeah. of bright colors. All of a sudden, it was always white. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. so I was sort of like, ooh, lipstick on the pig there, you know, yeah. Henry. Like, yeah, maybe yeah, we yeah. need to work on the plumbing and yeah. stuff first. But, yeah. um, but that house... It got listed on the Spokane Register in the midst of it being like in the building official process, like that close to being forced for demolition, you know? Ooh. I mean, like that's the kind of stuff that they could do. And I was like, ooh, this house, it's, you know, people would look at it and, and the neighbors hated it because it was, oh, it looked like, it looked terrible. But it was so intact and so perfect. And you walked into it and it's like nothing had changed from the 1930s. Wow. There was hammered copper um, light fixtures. And I mean, just the stuff that was there, it was like, Holy cow! Walking so into we a different listed. era, yeah. Yeah, so we so we listed it, and Henry was so um, on board with it that he also listed a lot of interior things. Most of the time, when we list something on the Spokane Register, we're only looking at the exterior. But he like said, 
the light fixtures have to stay, the windows all have to stay, the room configuration has to stay as it is. I mean, like he puts some serious protections on it. Oh, I see. So yeah. it's so but, if anybody but gets it yeah. eventually, oh, they've yeah. got to follow. Yeah, that. yeah. we had to have some serious meetings so with like the neighborhood and everybody cool. to be like, they're like, well, why are you listing this? Like this is a, this place is a menace, you know? And we're like. We don't care about Dude, the condition. No, we only check out care the stuff. about like the, how like it's my, in my house, 1906, and mm -hmm. you were so... Last night, I get this text from you, <laughs> email from you. She's so like, what the hell? And it was like 10 o'clock at night or something. Yeah, it was like 10.30. And you, yep. you went, and you're like, hey, I think we could talk about something cool. How about your house? And so you did like a massive amount of research. I was just like, I kept reading, I kept going and going. I'm like, wow. I mean... So that you know that that sort of experience of, of that, but I there there are the the original the window in the front mm -hmm. is still that that original uh, wavy glass yeah wavy yeah. glass there's yeah. several windows in there that even though they're not you know very secure when it comes to the cold right they're so original and beautiful yeah. that you I would never yeah. want somebody to take those out yeah. right yep. that's the kind of stuff yep. that you're and talking that's about. you know we try to protect those features that make something you know it, we call them the key character f defining features so right. windows are a big thing and people are people don't get that they're like what but just drive around and look and oh, when you see a house doors. that's had Some of the doors you know vinyl windows put in it's such a you know, it is a it hurts a blight. It's a yes. blight on the character. Of it really it. Yeah. is, and I mean plastic. And and the thing is, is sort of the preservation joke. You know, is that they call them replacement vinyl windows because you're going to have to replace them and replace them, and replace them. <laughs> right. because they are not, they're not, they're not what people. They don't yeah, they're not. Right. They are not lifetime. You know. Uh, no maintenance kind of things that, that right. the window companies will sell. You right, know, right, right. You know? Well, we so, were lucky in t when we got the house in 2015 for a million reasons because the price was great. Oh, yeah. The price now. was good. I, mean, I know. I'm now. Cause I... <laughs> but, but also, the, the they had done a really nice job of sort of restoring it a little, uh -huh. putting in windows that were good, but they didn't get rid of the ones that were right. original to the house right. and the really, you know, the main front window and all that yeah. stuff. And it's really cool. Yeah. The other thing that I, we discovered and you sent this was can you tell me a little bit about this house yeah. and, and what you, I don't want to give the address away. So yeah, I no, stopped, I won't give the address. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's on the South, yeah. South Hill by Manitoba. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and built in 1906 and I just yep. didn't know anything really about it. I wasn't house. sure if you did. I was like, Oh God, he's bit, probably already done some of no, it. No, I hadn't. Yeah. The, so the first owner was a guy named August Reamer and he was born in Germany in the 1860s and came fairly early to, um, to the United States. He was actually naturalized in, in eight, the 1870s. Uh -huh. And his wife um, was Matilda, Matilda. And she was also German. Mathilda. Uh, yes, Mathilda. Um, so she, so they basically were um, the first owners. I couldn't find much about who built the house or anything like that. But um, Reamer's super interesting because he had a big band. He had like a orchestra band that would like be in parades. He, right, a huge he performed band. at the Nat Natatorium Park. He performed at Manitou Park. Correct. They would have Right when it was parks. built. Yes, they would have um, these concerts in the parks. Right. And um, so Reamer had a huge band. It was like and, this polka yeah. tubas marching band Yes, sort the, very of first, the very first the very first notice kind of, thing. of, of uh, Reamer, he was a cornet. He was like a first chair cornet. C-O-R-N-E-T. Yeah, that's a, that's a trumpet. Is it a trumpet? Yeah. Okay, cool. thank you. I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah. But it, it had listed out because he was in a different band at that time. It was like 1900, 1901. Huh. And he was, so he was playing in this band. And the, um, what his selection was, was surf polka. S-U-R-F polka. And I'm like, what the hell is surf polka? I got to know. I don't, I didn't figure it out. Right. But, you know, yeah. so. It's like so, ska. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> So they weren't really in the house for very long, but they had one son. They had two children. One must have died either in child, oh. you know, at some time, because one of the censuses said that she had given birth to two children, but only one was still living. Hmm. So their son, Charles, um, who was also quite a musician, right. you know, lived in that house for a little while. And with he lived parents. in the house just and then, yeah, just east of us. They gave the yep, his house. parents. His parents <laughs> basically neighbor. gave over another lot, this little house. Yep. Yeah, and um, a great so he house. built a house yeah. there. 
And then they also owned some property on the other side of the street, like in that, that block. Um, so they had bought some property. Yeah. They were smart. It was up in the Manitou district, you right. know. Yeah. I mean, so uh, uh, it was good. And, and he said he was a professor of some kind. Said he, it always refers to him as Professor Reamer. And I, I you know, sometimes I'm skeptical, just like right. Dr. whatever and the elixirs, you right, know, that right, are going right, right, to, right, you know, right. save you snake from oil your or, women. Well, I mean, you had enough money to buy three houses. Yeah, three exactly. Houses. Build three houses. I don't yeah. Know, I, I think he really made his, um, I mean, his whole career was in, ha- you know, be- basically the conductor for these big bands. Interesting. But he also gave music lessons. So I don't know if he ever taught. I never saw any reference to him teaching in any kind of college or university. So I don't know. Professor well, might so have been a cute odd thing. because my family was super musical. Uh-huh. And, and I was telling you a little bit about that. Yeah. My dad, my parents had a band. A fam- we had a family band. That a my family sister- band? Yeah, my brother played the drums. My, my mom and dad <gasps> met at the... Here's another place I've, oh, I would love to find out, if you could yeah. help me. Yeah, Where the original Sons of Norway... Oh, yeah. In the 40s building was. Yeah. They, yeah. My parents met at the Sons of Norway. That's Glendow. Is that Glendow? That's, Glendow. that's the building. Yeah. Okay, Upstairs my mom was is the right Sons of that. Norway. Yes. Okay, that was it. Yep. So that's that the building it. they met in. Oh, wow. My mom played the accordion and the piano, and she had a band. Okay. And she hired my dad to play saxophone and clarinet in her band. So she's like, I hired him to be in my band. Okay, he was very, he's a renaissance man. Oh, yeah. Musical, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Architect. Yeah, really good. Wow. Um, yeah, he played uh, like at one chance one night. He was in, the, uh, in El Toro in the Marine Corps in World War II. And he played, got to play with Tommy Dorsey for one night. Oh, my God. So, you know, they needed an extra horn player yeah, and he yeah. got to play his one <laughs> night of fame but That's you know awesome. yeah and and mom was a phenomenal she was on the radio all the time oh, had her wow. own show on the radio at 16 and 17 yeah really? really phenomenal musician her mom was kind of pushed her into that kind of a hard drive uh-huh. and, you know what was of, her maiden name her my mom's maiden name was half pap Oh my goodness. And yeah, and her mom was apparently really good friends with the lady that started uh, Father's Day. That, that oh yeah, that Julia. They were or, uh, they were I'm sorry. sort of society the Norris, Dodd. society yeah. friends. Okay. Um. So, uh, anyway, they yeah she they met there and, and mom right she's passed away a couple a few years ago. I was like, where was she goes? It was Sons of Norway, and she pointed that block somewhere. And she couldn't remember which building, where, but it was it was Glendale. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, that's where they met, and and so they had a band their entire lives. They would play music How on the weekends. Interesting. And, and they, yeah, they played at you know the the B O F and yeah. the Moose Club yeah. and all of those places. Oh my gosh. My brother is a phenomenal drummer. He's in he's in Nashville now, and a, and a, a percussion's there and drummer. So he played, and then my sister sang. And five sisters and four, they also sort of sang in the band. Seven kids? Yeah, eight. Yeah, eight, eight of us. Oh yeah, God. yeah, eight of us. Oh, wow. Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, so when I, when I heard that How he owned a cool. band, had a band, yeah. I was like, that is so yeah. kind of simpatico. Yeah. And, and I've always felt like music in that house, whenever we play music in that house, especially older music, it loved it. The house is kind of... You know, plaster walls. Loves it. Yeah, I something think, about yeah. that. Just, just the, the magic of that. And then... One thing happened because as we look through all the mm-hmm. history of it in the '80s, you said for some reason the upstairs, which is a really cool upstairs, yeah. it's got this great kind of banister and three rooms up there, two rooms and a bathroom. Um, there were three rooms originally, and I think they moved one and then built built a bathroom up there. Um, that it wasn't finished until the '70s, yeah. yeah, and it was built in 1906, exactly. So and it, it feels but, much yeah. newer, obviously. When you go up there, that it is does so feel funny. That I thought I, that was the weirdest thing. Like, yeah, how could it make it? Because it's got all those, those, you know, it's got these kind of like windows over the, yeah, like dormers, dormers. Yeah, yeah we thought maybe it was a sweeping porch or something. In, yeah, you know, one of the rooms. But but yeah, it's so strange to see that. And then we got a knock on the door. I would have probably been there a year, 2016, 2017. And these ladies, there's three ladies come to our door and they knock and they're like, this is odd, but we used to live here. Uh-huh. And I'm kind of like, am I getting taken? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> right. Maybe you're like, uh, is this a setup? You know, they're going to rob us. I don't know. Right. And they're like, we, li- we grew up in this house and I just wanted to see if we could see the house. And we're like, sure, if you tell us about it. Right, right. So they Who came in and you? told yeah. us all this stuff and they're like, my dad put that balcony, that staircase in. And as it turns out, there was a repossession of that house. Yes. In the 80s. Twice. Yes. I think there was one so earlier. They even, were yeah. the people that it was repossessed on, okay. I believe. And they loved that house and they loved living there. It was their oh. favorite house and it for some reason he ran into financial trouble yeah. and couldn't couldn't keep paying it. Oh, 
okay. and it was it went over to the city, I yeah. believe. Yeah. So when I saw yeah. that, I'm like, I know there are the people that came to visit yes. us, and they were super nice people, really, really great, and they just you know they just reminisced about the house and wanted to see it, yeah. and it had changed a little. Since they had been oh, there, I'm sure. yeah. some, but not not yeah. a whole lot. You know, yeah. they, the, the what is our what is our um, we have this little pantry it goes into the kitchen, sort of the back of the house. Mm-hmm. The pantry door is the old staircase. Oh, so they where can, it used, they, oh. they had a staircase that went from the kitchen, basically huh. pantry, up the stairs to to the top of the stairs, which is now one of the bedrooms. Oh, interesting. So that got shut off and they moved the staircase to the front of the house. When you walk in the front door, there's a really cool staircase that goes up. Oh, so that was better, something done later. That was done, his, oh, they did that. And the family that, that, okay. that lost it, their dad had done that work okay. to, to put the staircase in. So yeah. they were really proud of the staircase. Oh, I'm it's sure. really beautiful. I'm yeah. like, in such a better layout than it had been had that staircase been from the middle of the house back by the kitchen. Well, it was really, really interesting yeah. just to see how it, it is out. weird the way, you know, pl- properties evolve. I know our house, so our house is a, is a 1925 craftsman. Oops. Um, and in, in 1980, they put kind of a big addition on the back of the house, mm. but I have, so I have the plans that they had, they had two sets of plans. I bet you do. Uh, <laughs> well, they left them in that they left them oh, in a built oh, in cool. and that, you know, all through the other oh, owners wow, that cool. have had it. But, um, but what they did was, uh, they had two possibilities. So we have this weird sort of like sunken living room area mm. with a big rock fireplace and that's, and it's vaulted yeah, ceilings, yeah, but they tied it yeah. into yeah, yeah, yeah. the, to the main roof of the house. So when you look at our house, you would never know how, uh, when, how big had, it is. Had a place yeah, like you know, like you would never yeah. know that it's the as big it. as it is yeah. and all that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the other possibility, instead of this like other living space, was a jacuzzi room. Whoa. So there was thought about literally like a whole room dedicated to an interior hot tub. Whoa. Imagine what that would have done. Like, Whoa. I mean, the humidity alone. Oh, so yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm glad yeah, they yeah. did not go with that. Wow. But yeah, so it's kind of fun wow. to see how, how you know, wow, things evolve over time. Yeah. So, so uh, you're not basically saying, does a house qualify? Like, does my house qualify to be a historic home? What do you got to do to do that? And should you, or does it, does it not? Yeah. You know, I mean, well, we have criteria that we have to meet, you know, one is that 50 year age rule that we talked about. And then we have five different criteria that things can get listed on as it can be. So it doesn't have to be in that district that you're building. No, gosh, no. Anybody can, we have 450 individually listed houses in Spokane on the Spokane. Okay. So why would somebody do that? Yeah. Most of them want to take advantage of a property tax incentive that we have. So if, you are if you buy a house and it's sort of down on its luck um, and you know you're gonna have to put in a significant amount of money in a like a two-year period um, we can give you a reduction on your assessed value of your property for 10 years by the amount that you spent um, okay. on. I think I always tell the story that I think some you know legislator probably bought an old house someplace and they probably thought well this is an important house to the entire city or wherever I live or town and so they improved it and then the next time the assessor came around, they were like, ooh. Oh, the taxes are All huge. of a sudden, the taxes well, you've made go this way more expensive. up. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And so it was like, well, wait a second. Why am I getting punished for, for a property that's, that's important to our history of our Correct. city? So as long as you do the thing where you put it on the register, which means it's protected from there on, um, we can give you some incentives. So that's mostly why people li- list properties. Okay. And so it, it has to be the right age and it has to meet the criteria. So it has to be you know, important to Spokane's history. That's kind of our broad category. Gotcha. Um, important to an, or it has to be related to an important person. It doesn't have to meet all of these, just one of them. So like the Sonora Smart Dodd, the Father's Day woman, right. her, her, her house, house right, right on, is right on there Sherman, on Sherman, yeah. yeah. And so that one is associated with that. There's not that many that are associated with an important person. Doctors, white doctors AJ and Reamer's lawyers. AJ Reamer is not an important person. Well, he's kind of, <laughs> Maybe. You could make a case for him being, he, he wasn't there for very long, but he was there during his most productive years. True. And that's important. Right. And, and the um, first. Yes, exactly. And it was his, it it was was his, his house. Uh, his house. Yeah. Um, so the third one is the, probably the most common category, which is its architecture or construction. Gotcha. So yeah. that is its design, construction, um, architecture architecture so that one is very we get a lot of those and then we have ones that are like um archaeology you know we don't list a lot of archaeology um things um and then we have a new one that's like a cultural um so something that maybe it doesn't meet the criteria the other criteria maybe it's been changed so much over the years 
perfect example. The first one we listed was the German American Hall. Oh wow! Down uh, on third? That, yes, that on third. Yeah, I remember it was going built in there as a 1893. kid. Was it really? It's changed significantly. It wow. didn't look cutesy German before, but right. that changed over the years. But but that one, it's always been associated with the German American Society. It made it through two world wars where the Germans were like the bad right, guys. Right, the bad guys. No kidding. And they would do these funny things where they changed it to the Third Street um, Society. And they would put ads in the paper Take and the say... Take the word German out. Yeah, for sure. I remember being there as a kid. Yep. Is it still the it same? Is. It is. Wow. And they, you know, so they rent it out. And, and I mean, the, the, the stories of that building are super interesting because they would rent it to whoever. Like the Wobblies, you know, the IWW, International Workers of the World. Right. When they were really agitated in Spokane. Read the Cold Millions if you haven't read it. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, gotcha. That's yes. really true stuff that yeah, happened just, in Spokane. Just you know, was these my workers. Just was my next door neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, very cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, so so they would, um, they would let, you know, uh, Elizabeth Gurley Flynn mm -hmm. speak at, the, right. you know, they're like, oh yeah, are they paying money? Let's go. Let's go, you know, and, and, and through the 50s and 60s, the Buddhists met there and the right. Italians. Yeah. And I mean, so when all these other so the brotherhoods spot. were sort of dropping off, right. they would meet at the German American Society Hall. And um, so anyway, super interesting story, but it's, it's not architecturally significant because it's changed so much. Um, Proust, I think, was the um, you know one of our German architects in the early days. Mm -hmm. um, he was the one that designed it first, and it looks way different. But it's still, it's this, it's this box of stories. You know, right. that's how that's we think it. of it. Yeah, it's, yeah, the, yeah. it's not so. Yeah. You know, preservation is trying to kind of move a little bit away from being just the best and the the most intact and all right. these things like you know it's more about what happened there and that right. those stories right so. right and i remember the we speak of those brotherhoods there was the knights mm -hmm. of the pythias oh yes which is right on it's it's on riverside, riverside. yeah and it's knack architecture, knack architecture. Yeah. And i remember being there as a kid oh my, really my grandparents were members oh you know the catholic Knights of Pythias, it was like the opposite of right across the street from the Masons. So they were like, yes. we're going to show you guys. So Do you want to hear of, something funny, though, yeah, about that, the Knights uh, of Pythias? Because we just listed that oh like gosh, in that the last building's year incredible. or two. It was yeah. so cool. We were in the so, basement. It was yeah. really rad. Yeah. So um, so we did some research about the Knights of okay. Pythias. And, and some of the things that they rented it out to, they had a Ku Klux Klan. Uh, Are you kidding? new members were indicted at the Knights of Pythias oh, Hall. What? 500 people came and watched. No they way. let the orange men have meetings there. Oh my god. Which was a Protestant, like not terrorist group, but they did not like the Catholics. No. And um right next to the Catholic Church, you know, the cathedral. Oh, the cathedral. So I mean Weird. we found some interesting bits and you know, we are it's got firm a, it had a funky energy. I tell you I that bet. being there as a kid, I was like, I Whoa. Bet. Yeah. I could feel it. Yeah. So anyway, that's, I mean, so we don't try to gloss over that stuff. Yeah, no, so kidding. we've, you know, don't. we've given some it walking cool. tours yeah, of that, walking that tours. neighborhood. Right, so yeah. there are walking tours online, right, that I noticed. Uh, yeah. There are those walking tours, and then during May is preser Preservation Month across the, the country. And so this last year we did like four or five free walking tours that we did How for do the you public. find out about those? Um, you have to like us on our Facebook page, which is Spokane Historic Landmarks. Okay. Um, and uh, so we advertise there. And um, so, yeah, so we did these walking tours. And, and we actually, I don't know if those are, I don't think we did put those on online. But um, but we would have a little map that people could follow. And we put, like, historic pictures. And we printed out all the Mac pictures, you know. So oh, yeah. we would, like, you know, there, mm. it always takes two of us to do it. Because one person's, like, passing out all the old pictures, you know. <laughs> and look here and look at... I mean, downtown Spokane. It's amazing. It looked like a giant city. Like, it was a bustling was. metropolitan yeah. In the city. In 30s, right? Especially. Yeah. yeah. I mean, wow. we grew, you know, from 1900 to 1910, we like 300% greater, great, you know, rise in our population. It wow. was huge wow. growth. Well, some of the buildings are just phenomenal down there. Really and a lot of them are gone. I know. Raised but we, for parking lots. Raised for parking lots. And, wow. That um, must drive you crazy. It drives me crazy, you know. And, and I think it's funny to see that you know, where the old rookery was. So the, the only building that's still there is the one that has the Columbia Bank, the Fernwell building. Okay, Fernwell, um, yeah. Used to have the Rock City Grill. Right. I worked there yeah. with that. Oh, yeah. and Uncle own it. My so, wife worked uh, at Rock City Grill. Yeah, I worked at, yeah. so I worked there when it was in the Fernwell building. Okay. It was the worst cocktail waitress in the city. Um, <laughs> good thing I was tall and blonde back then in 20, you know, 21. Um, you got away with me. Yeah, I got away with it. But um, so that building, you know, back 
before, I mean, when I so when I was working at the Rock City, that was a fully intact block of, oh, yeah. of historic buildings. It didn't more. get torn down until 2008. When you look something. at those old pictures of just all that density I and know. bustling big city and real yeah. now it's like there's not. It doesn't have the same feel. It doesn't because, because of, they're all gone. Yeah. yeah. So which I hate. I hate it too. But uh, but there are still some amazing gems there that, that have saved. You know, and and I think growing up as a as a Spokane native. Um, and being gone for so long, and really being gone, you know, right after high school, I was like, oh, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, never I'm out of here." Yeah. You're one of those. A lot of people. I did was. That. I left, and this I is did a different come back town for now. Many, they don't many leave years. as much. Now, I know. Thankfully. It's true. The brain. Drain. And my kids are like, "Oh, we're coming back." Yeah, yeah. I know. We'll see if they it. really yeah. do. But, yeah. um, but that said, you know, like to come back and suddenly be, you know, have a master's degree in historic preservation, be working in preservation for all these years, and you know, my family always lived here, so I came back to Spokane a lot, but when you come back as a visitor to Spokane, you're not really going downtown. So until I started True. like working for the state in the early 2000s, and I would come back for actual work things, and I was like looking up in downtown Spokane, and mm-hmm. you're just like, we have amazing architecture in the, Spokane. Yeah, there really is. I'm gonna ask you about your favorite building. Okay, yeah, but, that's right. But I mean, and it can't be, the Fox right. or the Davenport because right. those are just right. phenomenally amazing right. buildings. And the but, but everybody knows. But it. the Fox, you what you know, Eckhart Proy was on here mm-hmm. on the podcast, and he told some great stories about how it was renovated and when they did it, and right. making some really tough choices about we oh, think yeah. we're going to make this, you know, oh, yeah. and make some big choices about that. But but. Um, you had said that, told me that, yeah. that you, we were, were, yeah. you and I were at the Cornell. same concert. Yeah, we were like probably sitting like next to each other, I was which right is hilarious. I'm going to look at my center. pictures again. I will, I'll have to show yeah, you. Yeah, I was maybe just a little bit over on to the right side. Okay, we were, I was dead center, oh middle, front row. And my wife yeah. is a huge Chris Cornell fan. As and, am I. I would like her very much. Fun, yeah, you guys need to hang out. She, yeah. was a, she was in a funk for months uh, when he died. I actually cried it, when he died. Oh, and I have never cried when a celebrity died before. Yeah, and it, it was it was a big deal to me, and I don't know, you know, if it was because I knew his brother. You guys a had to be the same, whatever, the same age yeah. with that era, right? Of, yeah. of that whole grunge era. And, oh yeah. And he was just, I mean, he was oh, so yeah. amazing that night. Oh, he was so phenomenal. Amazing. It was night. his last birthday. His he last celebrated birthday with, with, with us. us. Yeah. I know. So, and his brother sang to him. Yeah. And you knew his brother. Sang. So. Oh, um, you knew. Uh, yeah. They, so <laughs> down at the um, at WSU, um, he. He would come, he played in this band called Inflatable Soul, like the Seattle band. And so they would come through Pullman, you know, they would do their college circuit and stuff. And um, so I was like, you know, I mean, tiny little club. I can't remember what it was called. It was down in the basement. Um, The cavern now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But down there, you know, there's like 50 people in the whole place. And so we're, you know, right up front. And, um, you know, he's sweating on you. You know, he's jumping up and down. He's got the hair and it's the (laughs) early 90s and grunge. And it's wonderful. And so afterwards, I was like, I noticed he wasn't drinking. And I'm sure I'd had some, you know, I was a, a WSU uh, senior. It was, you required. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> had a few beers at that point. You your degree from WSU. Unless. But I had noticed that he was up at the bar and he was just drinking water. So I went up and I ordered a water and he sort of looked over and he's like, hey, you know, you like this? Sh- did you like the show? And I was like, oh, the show was great. And so we start talking and, you know, we're just vibing and everything. And this is back in the days when, you know, they have their little cards that they send out when they have, when they have their, their next shows. Or, oh, right. Know, he's like, right, oh, right. we should get on our mail- mailing list. And right, I was like, right, right, right. Yeah, I should. So I, you know, put my name down and whatever. You know, that was it. We, we had a nice conversation. Like three weeks later, I graduate from WSU. And I'm having my, like, family little party in my, you know, 1959 split ranch house in Spokane I'm with Freya, my parents. Freya, yeah. And, um, yep. And uh, I go get the mail. And I, you know, I look and I'm like, it's my, you know, graduation party and everything. And I've got this letter. And I see that it says P. Cornell. He wrote me a letter. No way. And he he didn't like, forget you. He was like, I never talk to people after shows. You know, I've been sober for, I've had problems. So I've been sober for a long time. You know, yeah. my, my career is that I have to be in these places, but I don't talk to people. I don't interact. And he was like, but I don't know, something different about you. You were and drinking water. So we became, <laughs> I know, I knew that was the right move. You were so Frank, smart. I knew that was the right move. Dude. And so anyway, yeah, so I, um, 
you know, we basically like wrote back and forth Penbells. and he's like, With you know, it was so cool. And so anyway, so I always felt like I kind of had this weird connection to of the Cornells. Of course Cornell. you did. Yeah. Um, I thought he was my soulmate, but I didn't Did you, so that night at the else. concert, do you, he sang, did you rem- he say did, hi or I you didn't, should Because he, you know, I was with my husband uh, and it was just, so it had what? been a long time since. Yeah. I, I was always like, I don't know if he'd remember me. He I totally would remember you. He wrote you a letter and mailed it to you. He wrote me more than one letter. Our kids wouldn't even know what that meant. I know. Did? Oh, we like corresponded. Oh my god! I know we were like, and wow. the, and our, we were like two ships passing in the night. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just and I was like, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know if I was twenty one yet. I mean, right, I just turned twenty one, and he was older than Chris. Yeah, he's a couple years older than Chris. Right. So he and had Chris to is older than me. Years, oh, easy. he had to be ten years at yeah, least older more. than me. So yeah. he was. He looked young, but I mean, he was quite a bit older. So yeah, I'm sure he was probably, probably didn't know how old you were like, either. He probably had no idea. I think once you know, he kind of knew. It was probably like, ooh, maybe I should. Ooh, yeah, older. maybe this isn't right. <laughs> he actually came and they played at Gonzaga, at one point, and. Um, so I gave him like a painting because I, you know, he's like, I've shared my art with you now. If you could, you know, so I was like, oh take, my gosh. take pictures of my paintings. And he was like, oh my God, these are so inspiring. Oh, that's so and so cool. weird. Yeah, so I gave him this painting. Oh, and then years show. later, yep. And then years later, I moved to Seattle. So then, you know, a, a year or two later. And so I'm dating this guy that was a Gonzaga prep guy. Remember, <laughs> do you know Ken Hughes? No. No, he was younger. Ken he was Hughes, a year no. older than me, but. Did you know anyway. Dave? Um, his sister, Kara Hughes. Oh, Kara Hughes yeah, in my class. It's, yeah, it's oh, his, her Kara's little brother. Awesome. I'm dating her little Kara brother Hughes. over in Spokane. Oh, my in, gosh. In I just Spokane. saw her this summer at the reunion. Yeah, she's yeah. And so she a works small in Spokane. Spokane. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She's amazing. They're big, yeah. I, I figured, you know. Yeah. And um, so anyways, I'm dating Ken, and I... And Ken worked at this restaurant, and he knew, he knew like, one of Peter's sisters, one of the Cornell sisters. <laughs> and he ended up getting, like, he got the painting back for me. And I felt so bad... That Peter was like, it was a surprise, but Peter was like, hey, if she ever wants to sell it, tell her to look me up or something. And I was like, oh, God. So now, <laughs> then I gave the painting to some. I just gave it away. It was like cursed by that point. And I was like, <laughs> I never cursed. did see him. I never did see him again. You well, know, maybe so you will anyway. again someday. I don't Who know. knows? He lives in Tennessee now. I follow him on Facebook. Oh, he does? We're Facebook oh, friends. Wow. But yeah, oh, he's married. Man, that was and, such yeah. a devastating thing. It was devastating. Like, I mean, just. It really was. It really was. What a talent. I know. I mean, just the whole thing, you know. It just, it, you know, fame and fortune cannot buy you happiness. Yeah, and I think, I, I mean, a lot of that is just, you know, this these these opioid yeah. things that nobody can control, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, so, lost so many people from that. Right? I know, I just know. Just a complete shame. Especially if you're, if you know, like your wife and I are into the whole grunge scene, you know, like we're huge Pearl Jam fans. Oh, you know, so huge we, we, Pearl Jam. You know, She's a huge Pearl Jam Oh, she'd love my basement. It's oh my God. filled yes. with Pearl Jam concert posters around right, our pool table. We're going to have to connect <laughs> you guys. Yes, for sure. We're have to connect for you sure. Yeah, so, was, yeah. Wow. That was, but, yeah. So what what is my favorite building that is Yeah, not, building, right, right. Not I've one got of the big one ones. and I know my dad it was funny right before he died he had he had several that he hated. Like there's some bad architecture. There too. there is. There's some stuff that, you know, um, I'm going to say and, I, and no offense to the architect who was really yeah. a talented architect from cuz I looked it up and went they did that. I don't remember who did it, but the <laughs> he used to call the the uh, county health building. Oh yeah, Warren Hellman. Horrible. Yeah. He that was his favorite building. He, I know. My Isn't dad that hated it. He called it the, the building of the four urinals. The urinals, yes. <laughs> or the garbage cans. They sort of look like garbage cans. And you just you throw that and go, what are you talking about? This is horrible. You know? You know, And the, and the, the Chernobyl like, building, which is on... <laughs> I which call is it that, that one? It, It's the one across from the, from the, uh, the, the convention center. That apartment building, that big, tall apartment building. Right? Oh, God, yes. It does it look like, like an Eastern it, Block totally. yes, project housing. Yes. That it does not fit in. No, I don't know does who not. did that one. Does not. And, and, and it, maybe one. inside it's phenomenal. But uh, yeah. But boy, he would just go by those two and just go, "What are you talking yeah. about? This is so bad." Yeah. Just there, mad. there are some. There are some <laughs> terrible ones. That's for sure. Um, I love the ma- the Masonic Hall. I mean, I because oh, I love the spaces phenomenal. inside. We filmed our movie, The Basket, in there. Oh, the, you did. Yeah, the basketball scenes are all. Oh. I directed all those scenes, and they're in. We shot in that because there actually was. Was that the movie that the house was on Sixteen? Yes, I the opening scene. I almost thought I wanted to buy that Tim house. Tim Cunningham's house. Oh. Amazing. We shot, we knew Tim and he let us, I the opening scene, 
that's on the historic register. Phenomenal yeah, house. It yeah, is. the house. The oh Mar my house gosh, that's so called. great. Yeah. And the mm-hmm. back goes into the back behind the school. Mm-hmm. It's so rad. The little mm-hmm. handsome street, kind of private street. Oh my gosh. I want it. I yeah, want we, that. That's what we filmed okay. that opening okay. scene there, that movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. So the Masonic Temple, we filmed there, gosh, three days anyway, of, of all the basketball because that had actually housed. Barnstorming basketball games back in the early You're turn of the kidding. century. No, with that whole very historic. We worked really hard to make that really historic accurate. This is the prop ball from that movie. Right there, from the movie. Oh, and it's my an exact goodness. replica. And it's out of air now, but yeah. exact replica of the yeah, balls that they used you know, at that time, housed. and they're much bigger than the balls. Holy we play now. cow! Shot it different and all that stuff. And it's I'm gonna have to look that up. Where can I sign. watch that, Frank? Oh, Where can I, don't I see know. it? Okay, yeah, you're like, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> it's, you can find it. I mean, it's uh, kind of all. I don't know. <laughs> but but yeah that anyway the Masonic Temple it is such a cool building because we so we got to scout it and then I filmed there more than just that one time but such interesting oh, yeah. like it's funky it's, and it's dark. I never know where I am and it's dark and it's dark. weird have you seen There's the some... contemplation corner no okay so between between like I'm the, a little scared the commanders yeah. so the black and white floor yes you know, the big fancy commanders uh, ballroom area yeah and then the the actual like what they call it the blue room the blue room we filmed in the blue room and the the basket was filmed there's a a scene in there of of, um, immigration scene with the two kids and we shot that in the blue room okay yeah so you know the blue blue room room. is weird so there's so (laughs) between those two rooms there's the back hall where they had like Mm -hmm. their um, Mm -hmm. big cupboards where they would dress and all that Mm -hmm. there is a hatch on the floor and so um, every time I take anybody there, because I know these guys enough, where I'm like, I got to You got to open the hatch for me. Matt is the pro, you know the manager of the place. So there. So when they first got it, the um, Greg um, Newell, I think is his name. Okay. And the 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 um, the current owner. Yeah, okay. yeah. New Zealand, I think is where okay. he's from. Um, anyway, so they they tell me the story where you know you lift this hatch and it's just like this, probably eight foot deep little room and when they first got it there was a chair at the bottom and there was a ladder and so what they understood now i'm no mason is that when you did something wrong you, you were, were down the hatch you went down there and you were to sit and it was just i mean completely sensory deprivation Dude. i don't know how long they would keep Whoa. it there it's freaky Whoa. it is freaky so anyways that's what that's a good doing. location for for a horror oh, movie or something i hundred percent gotta remember that well shot. i couldn't even i could not get myself out of you know that place like you're like am i on the fourth floor oh, of the, the back yeah, or the sixth oh, floor the, of the you front get lost and then in there's that. like six oh, sub yeah, basements there's some funky, and then, it's a yeah. funky weird is, place yeah i remember is. we actually sang in choir at Gonzaga Prep, and we performed for like the head dudes. Oh, and it was really, really? strange in the blue back room. when it was. Well, I mean, it was still at the Masonic Hall until like yeah. 2001 and they, or know, two. Wearing the medallion, and oh, it yeah. was really funky. Oh, yeah. I was like, let's get out of here. Yeah. Man. It was strange. Yeah, yeah. McKinley yeah. School is good too. Have you been in McKinley School over no. there, in East Sprague? That's the old the old school on Napa, right off of Sprague. So it's just north of Sprague. Oh, oh, oh. the, the one that's old just, elementary school. The one that's that's Robert empty Stray now. House. Yeah. That is a beautiful building. It is. It oh, really is. So they're putting be... housing into. Are they? Mm-hmm. And okay. then they've been trying to. I know Rob Brewster was trying to do stuff. Yeah, on it's that. Br- it's still Brewster. Is it okay? Yeah, We're still yeah. trying to make that happen. Yeah. I, I mean, that neighborhood's really improved a ton. Oh my god! Yeah. My dad had a shop off of Ivory down oh there, gosh. and back in the seventies, oh, we'd be like, man. "Can we drive back home mm-hmm. on Sprague?" And we would count, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The trouble. I think you call them sex workers now. Yes, right? that's a more appropriate term. Yeah, that's not what we called them back then. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, historically. It's, I mean, that's what happens when you invest in one. I watched your, Gavin, no, I did watch Gavin, it with Gavin. Yeah. I mean, when what he and Ben and target, David Conn did, yeah, amazing to turn that whole investment. thing around. Yeah. yeah instead and, of trying to spread the money all over the place, and you're Monroe, not going to have that. I what mean, they've done for Monroe amazing. and what they've done for Sprague yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. And then there's, my favorite developer is um, Steve Schmautz. Yeah, Steve. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. SDS yeah. Realty. Phenomenal. And he's bought several of those yes. buildings and fixed them up. The right. old where Vindong was. The Vindong, yeah. Oh, yeah, there, Vindong. Um, you know, that building was, oh, my God. That was a scary, yes. scary building. Yes. And we went upstairs, and it was, you know, still like, oh, my God. The walls were splattered yeah, with Yeah, no, he's done amazing and, work. Um, he's it was, a really it's smart It's beautiful guy. now. He's a great guy. Yeah. The humblest 
yes. guy yeah. ever. Yeah, he did some. He's yeah. done, he's he's really restored some incredible. So stuff he's there. he's done. You know, he's done. So you still did, so there. you didn't? Did you answer your? Oh, I guess you said the Masonic Temple. The, is your I favorite. really do love that okay. building, but All I right. mean, there's so many. So there's the one so I've always thought was really cool is I cannot remember the first. No, it's the it's the it's the, it's all marble. The inside. Sherwood building. It's across yes. the street from the Fernwell. It's terracotta. White terracotta. Is it next to the little? Or it's, it's not the Chronicle no, no, no. building. It's across. It's right on the corner of the corner. The other corner of the of the corner. Right oh, across like from the, the Chancery. No, 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 no. It's right on on Lincoln. Right across from the post office. It's that corner building. There's a little cafe. Oh in there. yeah, that's like the Empire it's, State Building. It's the Empire State Empire Building. State it building. is. Yeah. Inside phenomenal. All. Yes, that mezzanine. The mezzanine. Yes. We filmed a, a film noir video too. in there. I mean the Montvale. Mont Mont I mean, just, I love the Montvale. We just. You can feel the energy in there too. We just keep going, too. man. I, I mean, the, there's. The, I love so many. The, the feeling you get inside yes. of these places is so unique. Yes. Yeah. That they one. They back. kind of have screwed up the main, you know, the facade level. But that said. On the on the Empire State Building, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's, I mean, something was done in the sixties, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, um, yeah, but but some we, we filmed a film here. noir video in there, and, oh. and it was so cool, black and white. Oh, I and bet. that marble and the sort of a chase scene, yeah. and it was just really yes. a cool. What yeah, a place. that's a good one. That's a good one. I think that's such a cool building. You know, the other one I really like is the Wooden City, the building oh, that's got Wooden, Wooden City. Wooden in City's it. a great and restaurant, by the Mike way. Mike Craven, uh, yeah, it's Phenomenal. wonderful. And Mike Craven, the nicest guy you ever want to meet. And he bought that building. It's 1892. It's right after right? the fire. It's one of the earliest ones that's that still right? around. Yeah. There used to be a McDonald's right there. Remember that? Yes. And, a, and then a Subway. So weird. And so he bought it, and it had a um, pawn shop in it. It uh -huh. had the worst kind of pawn shop. The guy loved to buy things, but he didn't want to sell any. <laughs> That's I went business. in there and I was like, well, he'd been business. there for like 20 or 30 years. Wow. And I mean, he had stuff in the basement, like every golf club that no one would ever want to buy, right. you know, just lawn mowers. It was just so much wow. stuff. And so, so Mike being the nice guy he was like gave him a long time to like, okay, you got to figure out what you're going to do with your stuff. You've got a year or whatever. I'm not in a rush to develop this. So the guy finally moves out after this year long thing. He moves all of his junk into storage containers. I know. Mike was like, oh, mm. these poor children are going to have to deal <sighs> with that someday. But that said, he finally gets it empty. And it's like October, right before COVID, I think. It's October. And they just are like getting started cleaning it out and, and figuring out what they're going to do with it. And there's four apartments upstairs. So there were, mm. and those were a wreck. I mean, they I had bet. been just, they, I mean, there were ceilings falling on you. It was dangerous to walk up there. Wow. Well, um, somebody broke in and lit it, lit like fires underneath the huge old beams from the oh. 1890s. Oh. Luckily, because it was so strong, it didn't it didn't wreck it, but wow. it like destroyed he, one of the original one of the sides because it really has two sides of the building. Um, had the original tin ceilings, and so oh. all the lead paint like started to come off of those. But they but but Mike had decided to protect that one interior feature, which was the the tin ceiling and so he took all of them down he had to number them all and they put them all back up they had them restored wow. and um and the apartments are beautiful upstairs wow. and it's just that's like one of those little sweet projects that, that you, you just you know yeah, you can't the help but yes cool. absolutely yeah. it's a great restaurant the whole deal so you know well, those are all preservation projects yeah. everything we've talked yeah. about are preservation yeah. projects yeah right well so, you're yeah. i could talk to you all day yeah i know well okay last quick question <laughs> Where where are the houses that Bing Crosby lived? Do you, you know? You know, I know that they are Gonzaga. Well, one is. Yeah, the, the I, I, alumni think, house is, I think is he that. was always in that but I, general area. I heard area. he had a place up north by the by the Spokane Country Club, which is now the Kalispell Country Club. There is a Crosby on, house. It was. It is not the same Crosby. Okay. I Def did some research on that okay. one because I think isn't that house sitting there now and there's like nothing around it's, it? Yeah, way in the back there's like a. Yes. It's like a. Call this area. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, gonna like, like they're building yeah, houses they, they, around they've, they've it, but they're leaving the that one. I just heard he that he lived there, but yeah, no, he else. did not live there. Okay. So I did a ton of I did like the later same in kind life, of research. I thought he had a house. Nope. No, but, but nope. he was just in Hayden. I don't know. I I don't. I know it wasn't that house. Yeah, yeah. my parents actually met him in the fifties. Did they? In, well, I'm sure place. with the band and everything. Well, they, they, my dad was a was a, a WCU. He went to Washington State. Okay, graduated from there, and they were trying to get his kids into their fraternity. The Catholic fraternity there, and so he met with my mom and dad. Went and met him. Really? And mom's like, he opened the door and he's wearing a blue cardigan with a blue eye. He's like, he, I mean, she was like, it was being in a like being in a movie. Oh he was exactly my like you think Really? Was. Yeah, and his house. Well, because he was probably gone in from Spokane. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, he, Hayden, he came back yes. all the time and yeah. lived in Hayden. And his uh, one of his best friends was my kid's great great grandfather. 
So they were pals and stuff. And it's, it's small I know. Spokane. There's a, it's so Spokane. It's small it's so Spokane. Spokane. Yeah, very small Spokane. But I, I know we had that house. I was just always curious about that Crosby house. Yeah. I wonder nope, if you it's knew. a different Crosby. I have I done you, that research and it is good. not the same you Crosby. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, that's what I actually, one of the things I love the most is like, I mean, learning like about August Reamer, you know, yeah. like I'd never heard of guy? him. But his I mean, mustache, he was yeah, cool looking. But I do these, you know, I do these deep dives. You know, people will call me and so say, nice or send me an that. email and they're like, do you know anything about my house? And I just can't help it. Once I start, like, I'm stop. just like, oh, I'm totally <laughs> rabbit Anna, hole. Oh my Anna God. Oh yeah, we like could totally geek spirit. out. I know. Because she had a, like, I asked her about uh, Kamalini's because I thought that was really interesting. Like, you know, did, was Al Capone there? And apparently his sister had lived That's there. That's so interesting. And, and so he probably was. And yeah. Sort of a hideout for the yeah. for the mob, you know, back in the day. Yeah. And Bugsy little Siegel's Spokane, girlfriend little lived Spokane? here. Yeah, Little Spokane. Yeah, Little Spokane. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just an amazing place. So, yeah, I've know, never been there. Those two things collide. Her world and yours, right? Around yeah. the buildings there. You've never been to Colonies. You no, should check it out. I it know. Is a phenomenal place. Yeah, really. Okay. That's a that is See? I mean, that should be on the historic register. It's on the that, north side. It I know. should be. <laughs> I know the north side doesn't count in this town, apparently. It does count. I, I joke, you know, like, oh, do I have to cross the river? And then, Whatever. you know, if I have to go to Hilliard, I'm like, are you know, we in my, Canada? My mom, we lived over by Shadow, and my mom was the same way. She would my brother lived to come on, to the my south brother side? lived on twenty sixth and you know, um, wall or something yeah. post you know and she would be like like hey, mom you need to come to my house oh it's so far away yeah oh god and it's like 10 minutes i know from in, in you know, all Shadle. reality i know but, but the but the mental block it's of so the other true. side of the river it's is, so true it's so Both true ways Weird. and i mean still, no place it seems like spokane is one of those places where you know i get this job i'm in my mid-40s you know it's 2014 and I go and, you know, I'm meeting the county board of com commissioners. And um, at that point, Marshall Farnell was d still the um, executive for mm -hmm. the county executive. And I meet him and I said, you know, he had no idea who I was. And I, I was like, I'm pretty sure I've spent the night in your basement before. And, and because I was <laughs> one of my friends in grade school was his daughter, Kara. Oh my God. And it's so funny. Like he, he laughed turned, he and he thought that was like the best <laughs> icebreaker. And then he would tell everybody when he would introduce him, he'd say, she spent the night at my house before. You know, and it was just like, it was a joke, you right. know. And, but you know, then you meet these other people, they know that are big, important people. And everybody that grew up in Spokane, it's like, oh, it's got to be within the first two questions. Where'd you go to high school? Or high school so number that you one. Can, yeah. yeah, so that you can like pigeonhole them into whatever they are, right, you right, know? Right, so right, it's right, just, right. it's so Spokane. Or just, or just, you know, it's, I don't think it's to pigeonhole. I think it's to know, hey, I must know somebody that yeah, you know. Yeah, maybe that's it's it totally, too. I mean, but you do the, learn a little bit if somebody yeah, says but where I, they went I, to Whenever school. I ask that, because yeah. I always do, yeah. is to, I, there must be somebody that of I course. know, because this is a big, small town. Oh, Especially when you third or fourth generation, you know, yeah. you just know somebody who knew yes. somebody. It does not take long. Yes, <laughs> know, for sure. When you're, you know, your mom went to Mary Club oh, and everybody did. else's mom went, you know, exactly. my mom, did your mom go to Mary Club? My mom went yeah, to Mary Club. my mom went to Mary Club okay. and all my aunts went to Mary Club. Wow, and, when did yeah. she graduate from high school? So my mom was younger because okay. your parents sound like they might have been a little bit older. She grew uh, 46 or 45. Oh, oh from high school? From high school, yeah. They were oh, old. Oh, gosh. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah like yeah. my my dad was born in 44. Okay, yeah, my dad And my mom was born in 48. Okay, so, so way, yeah. way different. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, that's yeah. Different Are you one of the younger? The, yeah, way different. Okay, time, I was going to yeah. say, you must have been all those like others. My sister's 14 years older than me. Okay, <laughs> okay. Sister. Are you Two families. Are you the last? Second to last. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I always tell people I'm a mistake. Well, you can't be because there was another one. Well, she's they didn't a mistake's learn. playmate. <laughs> yeah, Kathy was mistake. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. She, I don't think she likes that. My mom hated that. She's like, you were no mistake, mister. Oh, of course. I'm like, yeah, okay. So, yeah. Seven kids in eight years, then five, then me. I'm thinking. Oh, so there Oh, there was five years. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she, lost, she had a miscarriage. So there were nine total. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, come on. Yeah, well, that's it's okay, Mom. I don't care. I got her. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm here. I'm Fine. here now. I'm fine like, with let that. me let me joke I around. Got to with watch it a the, little all bit. the mistakes they made. It was good. It's not a bad spot to be in the yeah. world. Yeah, but that's. I mean, that's like that's very. It's very Spokane. I love. Yeah, being Julia back Sweeney in, was you know. here. Uh, I, I know Jim, her little brother. Okay, so well, Jim's a year she, older than me. Her mom went to you know there yeah. too, and yeah. so I think her, my, her moms knew each other, and she went to school with my sister Georgia. So it's all yeah, it's very connected. I know, and she went to school with Gavin. You know, so, I do not, I don't know that I knew that yeah. Gavin was from Spokane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, so he was a prep kid, too? Prep kid, yeah. Yeah. South Hill kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, okay. his family house just burned. 
a little bit ago, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, on 16th, really cool old house. You're kidding? Yeah, I oh. know. I know. So like a total loss? I think I don't know. I think oh, okay. I think so, but really cool old house too. Oh wow! I'm gonna have to look and yeah. see. I didn't, haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, it's not been listed. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, he's got plenty of kids too. He's he's, he's just he's a know, busy continue. guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could talk forever. So I thank you. I, I enjoyed I, it. Frank. I, anything for you want me. anybody to know about how to connect with the stuff? You that know, you do? I think it's really yeah, cool and it's think, really important. I think the biggest thing is just that we're not historical or hysterical preservationists. That's what you always hear. That's the joke. <laughs> oh. You know, like we really are very. Um, we work with folks a lot that have historic buildings and, and we compromise and we, you know, we understand that these are people's homes that they live in or the buildings, you know, are, are places that, that, you know, sustain business and, um, love seeing all the old office buildings turning into housing downtown. Yeah. That's a super cool use yeah, of historic buildings. Is. I mean, historic buildings are providing more housing and density in our downtown right now. Oh, um, so anyway, good. I just, you know, people go, our, our website has so much information on it, historicspokane.org. Um, every property that's listed on the Spokane Register has their whole nomination is scanned in. There's pictures. Wow. There's, you can So you can find out the whole history. Kind of like, I, like the stuff you sent me on my Absolutely. house, which but, I really appreciate. But better written. Mine was just, you know, I just, uh, I'll I'd take it. Up a whole bunch I'll of take it. It was so. really, really cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I could do it. I'm yeah. glad you liked it. Well, but this you. is great. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. And uh, maybe we'll come back and have more of this. Well, right. who knows? All right. <laughs> MIP Podcast was filmed at the studio of Corner Booth Media. Please sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on social media. You can also listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, and anywhere podcasts can be found. We'd love it if you'd rate, review, and subscribe to help our podcast grow. Be good to yourself and stay interesting.